Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. Welcome back to the channel and the workshop where I am about to take my first steps back into the world of guitar teching. Uh, I have not performed any mods or repairs on other people's guitars since I think November 1st was my last job. And uh, you know, now I'm standing here with a guitar in front of me and wondering, uh, do I still got it? Do, do I do I still have the skills? Can I can I make this happen? Can I make this work? Oh, the pressure. The pressure is mounting, friends. But today's job for my friend Doug. Thank you, Doug, for bringing your guitar to me and for your trust. Uh, today's job is a pickup swap and a setup and a few other things. We're gonna focus on the pickup swap. Uh, now you'll notice on the bench in front of me, I've got this lovely Japanese Fender Jazz Master. Now this guitar has already been modified before I even got to it. It's wearing a 920D custom wiring harness. Uh, I believe it's just a standard Jazz Master configuration, nothing fancy in the wiring department. Uh, it also has the Stay Trem Arm and Collet, which is a great upgrade for keeping your arm in place, although the arm is a little shorter than I'd like and it sits kind of high off the body. That's one drawback of this one, but most players probably won't even notice or care. That's just the thing that I notice. This guitar also wears a set of Seymour Duncan Antiquity II pickups, which are fantastic vintage style pickups. They beautifully replicate the sound of mid to late 60s gray bobbin Fender pickups. These are traditionally a little bit brighter and a little less loud as the Antiquity ones, which are meant to replicate the louder, darker sound of 58 to 63, 64 Jazz Masters. However, these are still great pickups, but the owner, Doug, well, he just wants something different. Uh, to be honest, these pickups don't always work for everybody. That's okay. And so he's looking for something humbucking for the bridge position and something a little bit smoother, a little bit louder for the neck. And for that job, he has included a set of Curtis Novak's wonderful pickups. In this box is a wide range humbucker for Jazz Masters. So it's a wide range pickup like you'd see on a 70s Telecaster in a Jazz Master form factor as well as a JMV for the neck position. Now, friends of the channel will already recognize that pickup as one of the units in Pancake, my favoriteest jazz master in the world. It is a loud, dark, smooth, yet clear pickup that I think is going to be an excellent match for the louder, wide-range humbucker going in the bridge position of this guitar. What we're gonna do in today's episode is we're gonna open this box we're gonna talk about the pickups inside, and then I'm gonna walk you through step by step as I accomplish this pickup swap project. We're gonna talk about wiring, soldering, all of that good stuff. So we'll try and touch on all those subjects in today's episode. Let's see if I still got it. I don't know. Now, before we dig in on these Curtis Novak pickups, I'm sure that a lot of you are wondering what the Antiquity 2s actually sound like. And to be clear, that's what you were hearing at the top of the video. But for the sake of comparison, let's run through every available pickup position and hear what's going on with the guitar first before we start making sweeping changes to its tone. And then we'll swing back around at the end of the video, do a little A-B testing and see what we've ended up with. And yes, there are only five strings on the guitar. The E string snapped right away as soon as I started uh, filming. So, you know, you're gonna have to bear with me on that. Sound good? Let's do it. Let's open the box and see what's inside. 
Okay, we've got ourselves a little note, some stickers. Now this should be I'm guessing it's the wide range. Uh-huh. Now look at this beautiful unit. We've got extra wires for splitting options, I'm assuming. But yeah, this is Curtis Novak's wide range for Jazzmaster. It's such a classy, classy pickup. All right, let's get into the second one. Now this is Curtis's JMV, which which is just a really great Jazzmaster pickup. Usually signs these. Yeah, right there. JMV. Curtis makes a fantastic Jazzmaster pickup. One of my favorites on the entire market. And I'm so excited to get this set installed. I think these are going to work out really well for our customer. And uh, yeah, they're going to sound very different from what's in there already. I am so excited to be able to install some of Curtis's great pickups today, uh, especially his wide range. Now, a lot of people on the market are making their own version of the wide range, and that's great. Uh, most, however, are not using the Cunife or Cunif, however you say that word, uh, threaded rod magnets, which a lot of people argue is really the foundational element of the wide range sound. However, like Lawler, like so many other places, Curtis is putting his own spin on the wide range sound. It may not have the original magnets, but what it does have is an amazing sound. It's big, it's clear, it's got a little bit of a single coil personality, but it's also very powerful. Uh, I really love this pickup. I cannot wait to show you what it sounds like. I think this is going to be a great fit for that Jazzmaster. Let's get it back on the bench and start getting to it. Let's go to the bench. Do not adjust your TV sets. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's start by taking the strings off, removing the vibrato arm, and taking all the screws out of the pick guard, and let's see what we've got going on inside. I really don't know what to expect, although 920D does great work when it comes to custom harnesses, so I don't expect like a rat's nest in there. I'm just not sure, as you never are when you're working on a new guitar. So let's get all that done. We'll fast forward through the uh, de-stringing process and we'll join you when all of this is ready to go. Now I'm gonna remove the bridge, the vibrato arm, and all the screws in the pick guard. See what we've got going on. Oh, yeah, okay, that's not so bad at all. I like seeing this extra shielding. It's gonna make the guitar a lot quieter than it normally would be uh, from the factory. And in fact, when I was playing it earlier, I was thinking, wow, that's pretty quiet. So that's really cool to see. The 920D harness is beautifully wired. All these point-to-point -point connections secured in place. I can't say that I'm a big fan of uh, zip ties on harnesses because I do want things to be able to move a little bit, but otherwise I have no complaints. This is really clean work. Yeah, installing these pickups is going to be a breeze. All right, with the guard off and the wiring exposed, it's time to take those pickups out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tin my soldering iron tip. That's something you want to do every time you start. It just helps the melted solder on the tip melt the solder on the terminal you're working with. See, just like that. Oh, now this is something I don't like. Everybody, when you're soldering, I'm going to get a zoom in shot of this. When you're soldering and making connections, you do not have to wrap the wire around the terminals. Please don't do that. That is so annoying. Fender does that on a lot of their Mexican and American guitars, and it is such a frustrating experience. So please don't do that. All right, now that the hot lead of the neck pickup is off, we are going to move on to the ground. 
And so here's another criticism I have of whoever did this. I'm sorry. Uh, this ground wire does not need to be quite this long. There are other places you can route this to other than right here. Now, traditionally, it is a much better practice to route all of your ground connections to the same area, but it's also not a good idea to have a bunch of excess wire. Oh my god, everything this person did is like this, isn't it? Oh my god. Okay, don't... Do <sighs> Please don't do this either. Why? Why? Why are you like this? What? <sighs> so here's a truth about being a guitar tech. And that truth is sometimes the hardest part of the job is undoing what someone else did. There is no reason. There is no reason to wrap wires around other wires. Why would you do this to me? I'm watching you. So I guess I'm gonna have to put this back where it was. <sighs> I'm not messing with that. This is going on the housing of the pot. As we're not messing with this again. We're just going to secure that in place. Bam, easy. Look at that good solder joint. Not gonna interrupt anything else that I'm removing. I hope you all like this video because you are getting the real, the real Mike Adams experience <laughs> on this one. Oh my God. I'm trying to be live and uncensored and uncut on oh, this one too. You really don't have to do this. And when I install my own wires, I will show you, I will show you how I do it and how I know that my connections will be secure. Spoiler alert, it's because they're soldered correctly. You don't have to wrap things if you just solder. Oh my God, you did it here too. I was initially worried about this video not being entertaining or whatever, but if you're the kind who loves to see other people suffer, well then friends, have I got the guitar-based video for you. This is unconscionable. Untenable. Uh, and the whole thing comes off. No. Other guitar techs in the comments, sound off. Let me know if you do this too. If it's not just me, so that I feel like I'm not alone when I, I scream and cry and carry on while I'm teching. What did you do? Why did you do that? I have so many questions. And demands. Ugh. Well, that's good. We're only removing things. But again, let me be clear. Um, you do not need to leave quite this much wire when you're installing pickups. It's a good idea for noise reasons, for routing reasons, for all kinds of reasons to just clip these a little bit shorter. Like you could get, you could use about half of this wire and still be fine. And in fact, probably better off. This is just, uh, yeah, it's a lot. That's okay. Let's move on. And now that we have the pickups removed, Oh, that's interesting. Where's the ground? There's no wire coming from the thimble. I don't feel a wire coming from the bridge thimble. And I'm not seeing a wire popping through from the vibrato. I'm gonna have to look at that. Okay, n here's a snag that I've hit. Uh, normally, I wouldn't be able to remove the pick guard because there would be a wire going from the casing of the pot to either the treble side body insert, AKA a thimble, so what we call them, or the vibrato, but there's there's absolutely no, there's no ground connection. And I didn't notice that before, it was pretty quiet, I think, I'll have to listen back later. So yeah, that's, that's something I'm also gonna to have to take care of. Um, yeah, do some research and see if there's actually a ground wire maybe hidden underneath the shielding, although that's not a great idea either. Uh, but this, this is not ideal, so, let me do that, I'll come back. All right, let's 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 see what's going on here. Now, as far as I know, there's no ground connection. I have removed the screws from the vibrato to uh, inspect. Maybe there's a wire there that's not connected. I don't know, let's find out. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing, there's no wire. There's no ground connection to the vibrato. Okay, so I've got a multimeter here set for continuity mode. And when you touch it to a metal surface that's connected to one another, it makes a little beep. Can you hear that? 
It's kind of a quiet beep. I really wish it were louder. How we use this to check ground connections is we simply put one of the probes on a surface that you would like to check continuity and then another surface somewhere else. Okay. So the, all the shielding, all the shielding, the shielding is well connected. The shielding is doing its job. However, if I put one of the probes in the bridge thimble, yeah, nothing, nothing's connected. This is nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna have to run a ground wire from the vibrato cavity. That's usually the safest place to do it. Um, so let's let's just take care of that, I guess. I got my nice clothy vintagey wire that I like, and we'll poke this through. Yeah, you can see that poking through in the cavity here. So that is as it should be. I am gonna make a nice little hole for it if I can find my razor blade. Ah, here we go. So I'm gonna cut out a little hole for that guy so we can run it through the copper shielding foil, which is well applied. It's not bad. That part's good. So I'm just gonna run it through. There we go. And I'm gonna leave enough slack that uh, whoever next works on this can still remove the guard without this pulling it back down onto the body. You know, it's nice when techs think of each other. If we were on Twitter, that would be a subtweet. I'm going to cut that insulation. There we go. Easy. And then I'm just going to pull the rest of that wire through. And I like to run my ground wires to this first treble side screw that holds the vibrato on because that's a that's a really secure place to do it. And also removing the insulation means that the vibrato isn't going to catch on the wire when you actuate the vibrato. So all I do is kind of bend it into place like that. We've got a secure ground connection. Easy. We're gonna put the vibrato back on and then at the end, I'm gonna solder this side of the wire to the back of the volume pot. No big deal. Now is the time when we remove the pickups. That's not the right tip. Where's my little guy? Where's my little guy? Where's my little guy? I like to go in from the side just a little bit to ensure that I don't mar the covers. Okay, that foam's not bad, it's just... super compressed, oh, and really stuck on there. Ugh. Now, like I said before, these are great pickups. I have nothing against Duncan Antiquities. I think they are fantastic. And these wires are fraying a little bit, but that's... Okay, but look at this. Look at this gorgeous thing. Look at that great wire. Look at these magnets. It's a pickup. These are great. I have nothing but nice things to say about them. I thought they sounded pretty good in the demo, too, but, you know, people need what people need. The heart wants what the heart wants. And the heart wants a wide range in the bridge. I'm gonna set the bridge pickup aside. Oh, wait a second. I think these are in the wrong positions, too. Yeah, I think this is the bridge pickup in the neck position, uh, which is not ideal, just because bridge pickups are usually wound a little bit hotter, which you don't want in the neck position because the neck pickup is going to be hotter just by virtue of the strings vibrating a lot more in the neck position than they do in the bridge. That's why we wind them a lot louder. So, yeah, this was... Uh, this is interesting. Let's just see. Let's, uh, let's just see. Let's just see. Let's just confirm my suspicions. Maybe the bridge pickup isn't wound as hot, and that's why they swapped them. I've done that before. I don't know everything. I'm just some guy. This boy, 8.4. That's actually really healthy for an antiquity, too. Okay. Okay. I see what we've got going on here. Let's see what the neck pickup reads. 8.6! Okay! Okay, I take it back. I likely would have done the very same thing. 
Let's set these bad boys aside. All right, time to install the Novaks. I'm gonna take some of this foam. How much of this foam do I want? I've cut a long strip into so that I can secure them. Kind of like that. I'll, I'll play with their positioning in a moment. Usually, I put foam in the cavities right there, right under the screws, so that all of the pressure coming from the pickup is coming from right where the screws are, so we're not like bending the bobbin or anything like that. Uh, I am going to make sure that I'm running these wires properly. Now you'll notice there are three wires involved, and that's because Curtis often gives the option of splitting his wide range pickups, which is cool. Uh, we're not doing that on this one, but we may down the line. I told Doug, the owner of this guitar, to play it as is and see if, if that's something that he feels that he wants down the road. So that's a perfectly fine way to go. Yeah, get them foamy boys. Gonna lay down some foam here. Now it's time to wire them up. All right, now you may be looking at this mess of colorful wires and wondering what does what exactly? Because most of us are just used to seeing white and black on most pickups as Curtis uses for his neck pickups. White, like most, is hot and black is ground. That's pretty simple. Now Curtis tends to use different colors for his bridge pickups and I, I assume that's to help you differentiate between the white and black wires when you're working in a guitar that uh, may have some excess wire inside. Uh, which is fine, but it can be a little bit confusing. So for the wide range that I'm working on today, yellow is hot and blue is ground. Uh, the red wire that you see here is actually for the coil split of the humbucker. Uh, we're not going to be using that. So I'm going to cut it in half and then tape it off to make sure that it doesn't make contact with anything else while it's in there. So otherwise we should be ready to go. So as I said before, we're going to cut these wires down a bit, and we're going to make sure we're only using as much as we need. To do that, I'm just going to visually estimate about how much wire I need to reach the terminal of the toggle switch, and that looks like it'll be enough. Note that I'm leaving a little bit of wire coming off the pickup. I'm not just going straight there. Uh, it's not a good idea to keep connections tight. You want them to be able to move around a little bit, say if a part like the toggle switch comes loose. So I'm going to leave a little bit of slack kind of route it in a visually pleasing manner, and then I'm just going to clip. Now, y'all watched me complain a little bit earlier about the uh, wire being wrapped around the terminals, but I don't do that. I say nay to that kind of tomfoolery. I take my wire, I stick it in the terminal, and I just solder it. That's literally all you need. There's not going to be a more secure connection than this. I am going to freshen up that joint just a little bit with some new solder. Just to keep it clean, keep it tight, keep it vibing. And we're good to go. Now let's move on to that ground connection. Now you'll see that the back of the pot is right next to the pickup. I'm not going to cut it down that short. What I am going to do is still leave a little bit of slack but I'm gonna leave enough so that if it turns, we're not gonna break a connection. We're going to be able to reach where we need to reach with just a little bit of excess. Also, if he takes these pickups out and sells them at some point, there'll still be plenty of lead left for people to install these. So that's about as much as I need. Just gonna clip it. And we're gonna solder that blue wire right to the back of the pot without <laughs> wrapping it around another wire. That is, that is wild. That is buck wild. You don't have to do that. We're just going to let that solder do its thing. Easy. That's it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to make it any more complicated than that, or you're going to give your old pal Mike a complete nervous breakdown. <laughs> Let's uh, cut this red wire down since we're not going to be using it. However, leaving enough that if we uh, install a push-pull pot at some point, there will be plenty of lead left. So take about half of that off and tape it. All right, I've got my old ass electrical tape here. And we're just gonna wrap this around the cut end of that red wire just to make sure that we don't have trouble with it touching a connection that we want to keep stable and secure. So yeah, no big deal here. 
that's too much. <laughs> that's definitely more than I needed, but look at that. Look how clean that is. What a clean, clean boy. Next, I'm going to make sure this ground wire that I added is attached properly on the back of the same volume pot that we've been working on, and then we're going to move on to the neck pickup. As I have done previously. Now I could just try and add this on to a different connection. I'd rather just keep them separate, again, for troubleshooting. If for some reason this wire is broken and you need to replace it, it's just easier to keep them all separate. Totally okay to have separate connections as long as they're all on the back of the same pot, which is how I like to do it. All right, let's get this neck pickup installed. Now that we've got that, see what I was talking about earlier? Uh, you can still remove the pick guard. There's a little excess wire. It might actually be more than I need, but it's helpful. Again, thinking about the next person. If this wire is too short and coming straight from the hole there, it, it can be super frustrating to work on. You have to work around this and you can't really adjust your uh, angle of attack. Uh, so yeah, I like to keep this a little bit longer. All right, let's move on to the neck pickup. Now the neck pickup can sometimes be a little bit more tricky when you're working on a Jazz Master because the leads aren't going to the toggle switch. They're actually going to the rhythm circuit switch right here. Uh, we've definitely got more lead than we need. So what I'm gonna do is cut down the ground wire first and attach it to the back of this pot of the rhythm circuit, the 50K right here. Uh, and that's just a secure place to do it. Again, all of these grounds are connected. So if I do it here, everything is going to be good. We'll be apples all the way. But that will just allow me to keep this lead short and stable. I'm going to put a little bit of solder right here on the back. I'm going to pre-tin my wire too. That's usually a good idea to just get your wire a little bit of solder on it so that it melts nicely. And I'm just going to run that wire directly to the back of the pot. There we go, now it's melting. Now that it's on there, I'm gonna flow just a little bit more solder onto it to make that connection totally secure. And we're good. Now for the hot lead. Uh, this is still more than I need. I'm gonna cut off just this tip here. And now I'm free to route this to the middle lug of the rhythm circuit switch. And again, you don't need to tie it around the terminal. You just heat it up and thread it through. I'm gonna flow a little bit more solder on that because that stuff looks a little gloopy. And yeah, there we go. We're secure again. No big deal. And I just want to note that the ground connection from the bracket here to this switch is being made by the foil. Um, not my favorite way of doing it, but it is a way of doing it. Uh, normally I'll just run a wire from here to here to make sure that they're all, you know, grounded together, but this should be fine. And before I try and reinstall, I'm just going to kind of train my wire to go where I want it. And we should be good to put the guard back on, so let's see what we've got going on. Just gotta move around a little bit. Tuck those wires in so you don't struggle with the guard as you're putting it back on. Make sure everything is routed correctly. And, oh, little red guy, poking out. Yeah. Perfect fit. Now, before we move on, I'm gonna double check continuity from the vibrato to, let's say, the output jack. I just wanna make sure that that worked. So, with my multimeter on the right setting. You hear that? That tells me I've got a good ground connection. Very happy with that. All right, now that I'm sure I've got continuity and my pickups are installed, I'm going to go ahead, put all the screws back in, reinstall the bridge, take care of a couple minor setup issues, including uh, checking intonation and uh, cutting this nut a little bit better. The strings were getting caught up here, especially with vibrato use, so I'm gonna make sure that that's good. I'm also going to uh, oil and clean the fretboard a little bit and uh, yeah, just give it a once over, a nice little polish so that it looks better when I give it back than it did when it came in. So yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I'll join you in a moment.
All right, I am back from the extra work I needed to do to finish this setup. A uh, quick rundown of things I did. Uh, number one, I tamed some unruly fret ends. The fret work on this guitar, uh, it has been refretted with much bigger frets, and the work is not all that great. Uh, the fret ends are incredibly sharp. You could run your hand up and down the neck and really feel them dig in. I also cleaned and polished the frets and fretboard, gave it a little drink of oil, uh, took care of the intonation of the stay trem bridge, installed a small shim to pitch back the neck, and raise the bridge so that the whole thing tightened up. Really feels great. I also set the trem lock button to work as intended, swapped the knobs for these great witch hats that the owner really wanted to install, and I think they came out great. And look, the numbers are facing me. Mind-boggling. Oh, and I also inspected the nut, but it turns out I didn't need to do anything to it. Uh, all of the catching and tuning issues that were happening were just due to a slightly larger gauge of string being used rather than what the customer actually wanted to put on. So I think there were 10 to 52s on here. We stepped down to 10 to 46, he wanted to try that, and I don't have any 10 to 52s here. So yeah, we went with that and uh, everything works the way that it should. Otherwise, I cleaned and polished the body, which I will do again uh, after this demo, and set the pickup heights, which I normally do by ear anyway. I know what these pickups should sound like, so it was no problem for me to strum a chord and adjust. Really, I, I just kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't have any like specific measurements that I go for or specific heights that I'm after. I just go by what sounds good. And uh, so these are wonderfully balanced. They respond beautifully to your playing. And uh, well, I, I think it's time to hear them.
Well, all right, what did you think? Could you hear the difference? I definitely could. Uh, the wide range, obviously, is a much louder pickup. It's got more mid-range, uh, more attack, more bite. It's it's just more of the guitar. Uh, it definitely has its own sound going on, and that's a good thing. I think this is going to work beautifully for the uh, owner of the guitar who loves to run it loud with effects. It's going to be a hum-free affair with... Um, kind of a nicely compressed signal too. It's very consistent. I really like wide range pickups and Curtis's is absolutely no exception. The JMV in the neck matches with the wide range beautifully, I think. Uh, on its own, that pickup is a little bit louder and fuller, a little darker, but still very clear. However, the combination of the two, it's like best of both worlds. You're getting the loudness and the mid range of the bridge wide range mixed with that like subtlety and complexity and uh, the the full range sound a little bit more scooped but the middle position is is glistening and clear and really really alluring I think so I'm really happy about how this came out and I think the owner of the guitar who loves to run guitars loud and loves effects and loves uh, shoegazy stuff and multiple tunings I think this is going to work out for them really well. But I would love to know what you think. Please let me know in the comments if you loved it, if you didn't love it, if it's something you're interested in, if it's a change that you would never dare make to your precious jazz master, uh, and everything in between, because, you know, uh, that's the spice of life. We all love something different, and what works for one person probably won't work for everybody. Uh, however, when it comes to this pickup set, I can say, honestly, I'm really pleased with the result, and uh, if this were my guitar, I probably wouldn't change back. I don't know. That's just me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you coming back to the channel again and again. For liking, for commenting, for sharing, for subscribing, all of that good stuff. It means the world to me, and I cannot believe that I'm closing in on 5,000 subscribers. That blows my mind. Never expected anybody to give a crap, uh, but here you are. Thank you. Thank you for making my year. It really helped out this year uh, with everything going on. In conclusion, thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other. And we'll see you in the next video.